Will you pray with me? O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Mortal, God asks, can these bones live? The prophet says, O Lord God, you know. Our reading from Ezekiel gives a vivid account of a prophet, this same Ezekiel, encountering the life-changing word of the Lord while he is among a people in exile. The Hebrew people are strangers in a strange land at this point in the biblical narrative. They are in the foreign and faraway land of Babylon, having been carried away from their homeland to be in servitude. They are longing for the freedom to return to their land, surrounded by pain and sadness and filled with anguish. Before we visit again this story of Ezekiel and God's prophecy to Israel, I want to tell you some other stories. And these are about friends of mine here in this area. Like the story of the people of ancient Israel in exile, these modern stories are rooted in being strangers in a strange land and in experiencing deep pain. But I promise you, these stories will also end in hope and the promise of God's goodness. I'm speaking about people who are refugees living among us here in Harrisonburg and Rockingham County, refugees and immigrants who are waiting, watching, learning, hoping, and praying. I've gotten to know a few dozen local refugees and immigrants through teaching with three English language learning programs. There's Skyline Literacy, which teaches new, uh, which educates new English speakers with the help of volunteer teachers. There's the Intensive English program, which educates about 55 beginner, intermediate, and advanced students on the campus of EMU and a new collaborative effort between agencies. This effort actually has no name yet. It's a group of educators who are teaching Afghani refugees who have just arrived in Harrisonburg in October. These 100 refugees are mostly living at the Massanetta Springs Conference Center over on the south end of town. This last group of refugees in particular is waiting to receive word at any day to see where, where they and their family will be placed in the Shenandoah Valley to live for a time. All of these refugees and immigrants who learn English through these various programs live among us here now legally, and it's unclear for some how long it will be, how many months or even years they will stay, or whether their relocation will be permanent. But for now, especially for refugees, their basic plain needs of food, shelter, warmth, communication, basic health care, and a beginner's knowledge of American day-to-day -day life, these needs are being met by volunteers, teachers, and advocates and these agencies are working hard day in and day out to protect and empower refugees in particular, our fellow human beings. So zooming back out to the broader picture of refugees in our area, some of the people who have been here for months have been given work permits and they work unbelievably hard to study English and to put in hours with their employers as well. They work at Cargill, at George's, at Marshall's Distribution Center, at Lakeside Book Company, at DoorDash, at the cafeterias for our universities. And still, they somehow find the energy to attend classes to study the English language and the basics of how to live in the US. Without exception, every person I have known among these immigrants and refugees is an eager student 
and a dedicated worker. I will share briefly with you some of their stories and I'll use different names, but these accounts are real. Sarah and Rebecca are from the country of Sudan. It's one of the many war-torn places from which rich refugees have fled. They received the difficult news recently that their country just had a coup d'etat which displaced their pe president. Sarah and Rebecca love being students at our EMU program, but things become more difficult when they have no help with childcare if a son or a daughter gets sick, or if the public school system has a day off. And on top of all of this, Rebecca's son just required surgery. The surgery was successful, thank goodness. Abdul and Laha from Iraq just had a newborn baby, as did Marla from El Salvador. The other students at the intensive English program threw a baby shower for the expectant parents, and they sent celebratory texts and emails to all students and teachers with the birth of each little one. Many of the students have big dreams that they're slowly working to achieve. One student wants to study physical therapy. Another wants to be a psychologist. Another wants to be an interpreter for a sports team. Some refugees and immigrants have qualifications from their home countries already. Habib has a pharmacy degree from Afghanistan, and Khalil taught science in Iraq and wants to become certified to teach in the US. And my friend Philip is here today, sitting with us at worship. He's letting me share that he wants to work in justice and reconciliation efforts in the US and globally, I think, after he completes a master's degree at EMU's Center for Justice and Peace Building. Philip hopes that he can continue to be a regular attendee here at Muhlenberg and help out with worship sometime soon. Scores of immigrants in the US are already faithful Christians, and many others are faithful Muslims, among other major world religions. But these two religions here are of the spiritual line of Abraham. I think that many of us Americans hear news about so many refugees and immigrants coming to our country, and I think that we feel overwhelmed when we hear about the numbers and when we think about such questions as this. How will they find employment and education and health care when we ourselves often struggle with addressing these basic needs. I hope, I pray, that we can discover that on this earth there is enough of basic provisions for all to go around. There is enough shelter, basic education, and work for us all to live in peace. And yes, in the United States, talking about and making decisions about the workforce, the education sector, and the economy is complicated and controversial. But we can trust in something working among us that is divine, God's economy of grace, mercy, peace, justice, and daily bread. There is always enough in God's economy to go around. There is community to be shared, life to be celebrated, and peace in which we can live together despite our different cultural backgrounds, even celebrating and lifting up our different cultural backgrounds. Mortal, God asks, can these bones live? The prophet says, O oh Lord God, you know. God speaks to Ezekiel, the ancient Hebrew prophet, and tells him to tell the valley of dry bones, the bones of those of Israel and Judah who are dead and gone. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and I will put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. This is the miraculous description of God's intention for the future of God's people. That which was lifeless, 
Those who have perished, they will be reanimated, filled with God's breath of life that instilled humanity with life at creation. The dead, dry bones will be knit together once more with muscle, sinew, blood, skin, oxygen, to live once more. O you that were dead and gone, you shall live again in the Lord. God says, I am going to open your graves. I will put my spirit within you. I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. This is the hope of the future for the line of Abraham, the house of Israel. And this is good news for all of God's children, including us as spiritual descendants. This is the miracle of new creation, new hope, life anew, resurrection to a new day in the Lord. Today, just as our immigrant neighbors who have run and crawled to this land are seeking hope to become real and life to be offered anew, we gather here, we gather online, we wait for signs of God's promise fulfilled in the Messiah. The message that Ezekiel receives to proclaim and that we receive again today to proclaim is not a maybe or a wishy-washy possibility. As sure as the breath in our bodies, as sure as our baptism, as sure as the real presence of God in this meal and in the word, God announces with certainty our future the spirit reviving, the flesh awakening, our bodies rising, the people living in the name of God, the Holy One, whom we have seen made flesh in Christ. God says, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. God proclaims this certain future among the prophets. We who once said our bones are dried up and our hope is lost, we are cut off completely, like the Israelites said. We can trust in the Lord and say we will live again. Here in the depth of the Advent season, recalling Christ's birth as the word made flesh to come and dwell among us, we wait again his coming in glory. Though we are exiles in a world of pain and anguish and suffering, God will return us home and restore our community. Can these bones live? Yes, in the name of the Lord, they will, they shall. Let us hope and trust in it. Let us proclaim it among ourselves and our neighbors, among the whole world. Let us live our lives and conduct our actions in ways that share and announce this hope. I invite you to pray with me as I pray again our prayer of the day. God of breath, you promised new life to your people in exile by breathing into a valley full of dry bones. Breathe new life into us so that we might live passionately for you. Amen. Let it be so.